Welcome to your Health Facts Podcast, the show that brings you useful insights you can really use. Today, we're going deep into the world of masturbation. It's a topic that tends to get clouded by a lot of myths and misunderstanding. We're going to unpack the science, explore the potential benefits, and address some of those concerns that people commonly have. Masturbation is an incredibly common experience. Um, studies show over 90% of men and 75% of women report engaging in it. So it's pretty widespread. Yeah, and this widespread practice is likely due in part to all the potential benefits. Masturbation has been linked to, well, quite a few positive effects on both physical and mental well-being. Like what? Well, things like improved mood, better sleep quality, some studies even suggest increased focus. Interesting. What's behind these benefits? It could be attributed to the release of different hormones during masturbation, like dopamine and endorphins, you know, yeah. the ones associated with pleasure and a sense of well-being. That makes sense. It's not just about immediate gratification, though, right? Um, no, not at It can be a way to learn about yourself, too. Absolutely. Masturbation can be a really valuable tool for self-discovery. How so? By exploring your own body and figuring out what feels pleasurable, you gain a much deeper understanding of your own sexuality. It's about what feels good for you. Exactly. And that knowledge then empowers you to communicate more effectively with a partner, which can lead to more fulfilling and satisfying intimate experiences. Makes a lot of sense. Now let's dive into some of the myths surrounding masturbation. I think we've all heard at least a few. Oh yeah, some of them are pretty out there. One of the most outlandish claims is that it can cause blindness or lead to hairy palms. I think I remember hearing that one growing up. These assertions are completely unfounded. There's literally no scientific evidence to support them. Where do they even come from then? They mostly stem from outdated societal views that often stigmatize masturbation. Ah, so not based on anything real. Not at all. Another common myth is that masturbation can lead to erectile dysfunction. That's a big one I think a lot of people worry about. It's simply not true. In fact, regular masturbation, especially when it results in orgasm, can actually strengthen your pelvic floor muscles. And those are important for? These muscles play a vital role in sexual function and achieving orgasm. So engaging in masturbation can actually have a positive impact on erectile health. So it's almost the opposite of what people think. It's crucial to differentiate between masturbation itself and other factors that can actually contribute to erectile dysfunction. Like what? Well, for instance, excessive exposure to pornography can set up these unrealistic expectations and lead to performance anxiety. And that anxiety can then cause problems with getting or maintaining an erection. Exactly. So the key takeaway is that masturbation itself is not the problem when it comes to erectile dysfunction. It's more about addressing those underlying issues like performance anxiety or unrealistic expectations that might be contributing to the problem. That's a really important point. Okay, so we've to bug to a couple of pretty big myths there. Mm. What about this idea of masturbating too much? Is there such a thing? Well, there really isn't a magic number when it comes to how often you masturbate. It truly depends on the individual. So there's no set limit. For most people, even doing it daily isn't a problem. It only becomes an issue when it starts to interfere with your everyday life, relationships, you know, or responsibilities. So it's about finding a balance. Exactly. It's essential to approach masturbation with self-awareness and pay attention to how it's impacting your life. You know, make adjustments as needed. What are some signs that maybe it's time to reevaluate things? Well, if you find yourself skipping out on social events or neglecting work because you're preoccupied with masturbation, then it might be a good time to take a step back and look at your habits. That makes sense. Another myth I've heard is that masturbation is a sign of a troubled relationship. Is there any truth to that? No, not at all. That's just another misconception. Okay. Plenty of people in healthy and satisfying relationships engage in masturbation. So it's not necessarily a red flag? Not in the slightest. It's a personal choice and doesn't really reflect on the quality or intimacy of the relationship. Some couples even incorporate it into their relationship. Absolutely. Masturbation can actually complement a healthy relationship. It gives individuals the space to explore their own desires and preferences, which can then enhance their interactions with their partner. That's a good point. Open communication is key, right? Definitely. Talking openly about masturbation with your partner can actually build trust and understanding. Now, what about testosterone? I think there's a misconception that masturbation depletes 
testosterone levels. Right. That's a common one. And it's simply not backed by scientific evidence. Testosterone levels actually go up during orgasm, regardless of whether it's achieved through masturbation or partnered sex. So it doesn't actually lower your overall levels. After orgasm, testosterone levels naturally return to their normal baseline. Interesting. So really, it's all about approaching masturbation in a healthy and responsible way, like any other aspect of our lives. Exactly. It's about respect, consent, and focusing on your well-being. And of course, if you have any concerns or questions about masturbation or anything related to your sexual health, the best thing to do is to talk to a healthcare professional you trust. It's important to remember, you know, not to let those myths and misinformation um, color your understanding of this part of life. It's a completely natural part of human sexuality. Exactly. So we encourage all our listeners to embrace their sexuality mm. and you know, make informed choices about their bodies and their health. And if you're looking for more evidence-based health information, well... Be sure to subscribe over at yourhealthfacts.com. Thanks for joining us today.